Hi, and welcome to Moto Mouth. I'm Moshe K. Levy, and today we're going to be talking about the Yoast Power Tube for older Harley Davidsons that have the Kian Constant Velocity 40 millimeter carburetors. I recently picked up this 2004 883 Sportster Custom. I got a great deal on it. I couldn't resist. As some of you know, my first new motorcycle way back in 1998 was a 1200 Custom Sportster that I heavily modified. It's how I got my start writing product reviews for the magazines because I used that bike as a test bed. And I got pretty handy at taking the whole thing apart and putting it back together again. Eventually, I got to the point where I was making 95 horsepower at the rear wheel with that Sportster, which was quite a lot back in those days. Anyway, one of my favorite mods at the time for stock or near stock stage one Sportsters like this one was installing the OS power tube in the carburetor. And as it turned out, I still have a set in my treasure trove of old Sportster parts that I just uncovered in the garage. So I figured, why not make a video showing how to install it? This video is installation only, no tuning yet because there's still a lot of salt and ice all over the road. So in a couple of weeks when it warms up, we can get to that part. Okay, so these are the components of the Yoast power tube, at least the one that I had from years ago. It's probably the same today. You've got your washers, your two needles, red and blue, an assortment of jets, 165, 175, 185, 195, the emulsion tube, and a 1 8 inch drill bit. So for installation, we're going to start at the bottom of the carburetor. These screws, these four screws that hold the float bowl on are very, very delicate. So be careful when you're removing them. You don't want to strip them. Take the float bowl off. Notice I've already cleaned this up. It had uh, almost 20 years of gunk on it, and now it's pretty clean. And we see the internal um, of the bottom of the carburetor. We want to remove the main jet, which in this case, requires a flathead and you just turn it counterclockwise and the jet end in this case the emulsion tube pops out I'm not sure if this is the stock emulsion tube or not but either way you want to remove it because we're going to be replacing it with the Yoast components in this case it's a 175 on a Sportster which was um, stage one to begin with with high flow air cleaner and um, exhaust for this uh, specific Sportster application, usually a 45 slow jet is a good place to start. So I'm dropping that 45 slow jet in place here. It was already there on this bike. Um, if you have a totally stock bike, it might be something else like 42. But put a 45 in there on a Sportster, it's a good place to start. Here we have the um, Yoast emulsion tube, which we're going to just put right back where the where it goes right here turn clockwise this is a um, eight millimeter open end wrench when you're tightening things down here it's brass it's delicate do not wrench hard just snug it up nicely and don't over torque things you don't have to it's not necessary just finger tight that's it now we're going to put the jet in uh, it's a Sportster 883 Stage 1, so 175 is always a good place to start in my experience. So I'm going to use the 175 Yoast main jet that came with the kit. This is a quarter inch. So we're going to just tighten that jet up into the emulsion tube. Like that, again, gently. There's no need to over torque things. And now we're ready to put the float bowl back on, line up the rod for the accelerator pump, and just drop it into place. Those awful Phillips head screws that come from the factory that usually strip out, uh, this is an opportune time to replace them. Hardware kits are available everywhere, eBay, Amazon, your local dealer, it's about $12, $13, and you can get uh, stainless steel Allen heads that will just replace all these awful Phillips heads. In this case, um, we're using them to just tighten down the float bowl, three millimeter hex drive, again, gently. And here you see the accelerator pump screws I did as well. So this is what the bottom looks like now with um, hex hardware. Now we're gonna go into the top of the carb we have to remove this um, plastic cover. 
Same warning applies. These Phillips screws that come from the factory are very easily stripped, so take your time. If you do strip them, by the way, get a Dremel tool, cut a slot in one, and use a flathead to remove the screw. And we're going to replace these as well with, with stainless steel Allens. This um, brass collar, you're going to want to save that. That's necessary to hold the bracket that holds the throttle cables in place. So we're taking the top off. Here you can see the inside. Uh, black plastic cover, you've got your spring. That black rubbery thing is the diaphragm, which is connected to the slide. Here comes the spring, and it's a little plastic doohickey that basically holds it in place. So we just remove the doohickey from the spring. Save all of this stuff. These are your stock components. And here's the most delicate part of the operation, this rubber diaphragm. It's absolutely critical that it doesn't tear or rip. You want to really, really handle this thing gently. It's sitting in a groove in the carburetor top, so just gently with your fingers pull it out of the groove. Everything very delicately, and then we're just going to pull the slide out of the carburetor body. Just pull it right out. There we go. So here's the slide assembly. You can see the, the needle is sticking out the bottom of it. So obviously uh, we're going to be replacing that needle and this is what the inside looks like. Again, I clean this all up. Um, if your carburetor is dirty inside, then while it's all apart, clean it up. You want everything to be immaculate if you can help it. Let's take the uh, old needle out. We won't need that in this application. The whole point here is to use one of the Yoast needles. So that's out of the way now. And there's your holes. Needle hole and vacuum port. Needle holes in the middle. And we're going to be using this supplied 1 8 drill bit to enlarge both holes. Um, in this case, it looks like somebody had already done something to enlarge these holes, but um, along its 20-year lifespan. But this this is um, just to clean that hole out with the 1 8 inch drill bit. It's okay to do even on a Sportster. I've installed many Yoast kits this way, and kind of gives it a little bit faster response. Clean up any debris blow it clean with compressed air. Just make sure those holes are immaculately clean. And now we can drop the slide back in place as shown. It just drops right back where it came from. And you can only put it in one way, so you can't, can't mess that up, even if you wanted to. So here we've got the two needles that came with the Yoast. Now, you can play with both. The red is a little richer, better for bigger, heavier bikes. Um, that's the, uh, you can do second slot red or third slot blue to start. Since this is such a mild 883, only stage one, I'm going to just go with the blue, which is a little bit less aggressive. And then later I'll experiment with the red and see which one performs better. But this blue in the third factory slot, see that the clip there in the third factory slot, is, is good. Put the uh, washer under the clip and just drop this needle right into the hole in the center of the slide. It drops right in place and we're going to put the plastic doohickey from before right back in place. When you drop this place, uh, this um, uh, doohickey in place, make sure that its fingers are not blocking the hole in the slide. So just take a look there. And now we have the um, the job of basically getting this diaphragm back into position without ripping it or tearing it. This is something that causes great frustration to many people, but I've developed a technique basically through experience that, that seems to work for me. First step is to just kind of nudge it in place. You saw that I was just moving it with my finger putting it back in the groove of the carb body. We can now put the Yoast spring in place. And of course, if you've got it all apart and it's a Harley Davidson, might as well 
put a chrome top in place instead of that ugly plastic one. Uh, this is, you know, maybe $18, $19 at your local dealer. And now you're dropping it. Now here's where the technique comes into play. You are just barely touching the diaphragm and moving this carb top in a counterclockwise or clockwise direction, whatever feels best for you. And you're going to start to feel it feel much smoother as you push down very gently, very gently. And you'll see that it's actually moving everything into place. So here I'm peaking. See how everything's not bunched up, not everything's in the groove. The diaphragm is in the groove and I can see it from all the different sides as I turn this in a counterclockwise way. You start to feel it lie flat. And when you feel it lie flat, you know you're done and you peek underneath like I just did. So here are the um, three millimeter hex that I'm going to be using here instead of those horrible Phillips that come from the factory. Um, just put all those in position, finger tight first, and then a little bit more tight with the, with the tool. And that's basically it. We can see the slide now moving freely. Nothing's holding it, nothing's latching anywhere. It's coming down by force of the spring. It's a good indication that things are going to work. If you had compressed air, you can actually check it. But in this case, I've done it so many times that I'm confident that it will work fine. And that's basically the whole installation.